I showed you this butte yesterday. I got this incredible handmade water seal crock at the Baker Creek Tulip Festival this week past weekend. And we're not gonna skip a beat putting this guy to work. Isn't she pretty? And I figured what better way to send it on its maiden voyage than by making one of the most requested videos I ever have had on this channel, kimchi. Insert plug here. I'm still playing with the kimchi recipe that I'm selling at the Ava Farmer's Market almost every Saturday from eight to noon. I hope some of you local folks will have a chance to stop by. Did you see what I did there? Anywho, sir, this is a new recipe as well as a new technique that I'm trying out here today. And I'm gonna let you know how things go over on Instagram. Gots to keep looking for new ideas and new inspiration. So we'll be trying out a few more kimchi recipes as the Napa cabbage season actually comes into season. You might be wondering what on earth is so amazing about these here water seal crocs? Other than how gorgeous it is, of course. This particular croc allows for a bit of a larger ferment than you do with a regular mason jar and a lot more peace of mind. No attachments needed, no bubblers, and no fancy lids, other than the cute one that comes with it. We load the ferment into this center hole right here, clean out any spills that might have accumulated in the moat, and then we add water to the outside moat so that it will allow the gases that are gonna build up on the inside to escape without allowing air or mold spores to get back in. All that really means is you get a low stress, super tasty gut healing treat and beautiful decor at the same time. So let's get to it. I'll link it down below for you guys, but I'm following a recipe from petersfoodadventures.com. What we're gonna need for this recipe is one large Napa cabbage or two small cabbages, four carrots, six cloves of garlic. It says one knob of ginger. It says 75 grams. I don't think this is 75 grams, but I don't have my scale. Four spring onions, a medium daikon radish, gochugang, gochugang, which is just a Korean chili paste, one apple. It calls for fish sauce or soy sauce. We're gonna use this here, tamari and salt. The first thing we need to do is peel off some of the outer kind of icky layers of the cabbage and those go to the chickens. And then cut off the crown, which I would say is probably an inch maybe. It says to take off each layer, each leaf individually and cut them into about two inch chunks. I don't know, you're looking for something kind of like this. And I'm sure you could just as easily cut this this direction in eights, kind of like just a big old pie, and, and then chop those into the sections. But I decided I'm gonna follow the recipe today. And we're just gonna put it in a big old bowl. And then once we get the cabbage all chopped up, we're gonna go ahead and throw this in a colander and kind of rinse it off really well. Then we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of, it says sea salt, but I just have pink Himalayan salt to a small bowl. And add enough water to get it to dissolve. Give it a little mixy mix. It'll go faster if you use warm water, but not hot water. Then we're gonna add it to the bowl of cabbage and give it a really good stir. You really wanna make sure the salt water comes in contact with all of it. Then we're gonna weigh it down with whatever you got the means to weigh it down with and cover it with a cloth to make the bugs unhappy. And we're gonna leave this at room temperature for between three to four hours. We're kind of just looking for like a sad, limpy looking cabbage at this, on the spine. If we haven't met before, hey, my name is Anna and welcome to the Fermented Homestead. On this channel, I share my passion for gut health, fermenting and food preservation as we learn the skills we weren't lucky enough to have passed down to us. And if you're having a good time, I hope you'll think about hitting that thumbs up button. It really does help the channel out, but the best way that you can help us out here is by sharing this video on all your social media. That way all your friends can find out there's a better path to vibrant health through gut healing. And while we're waiting for that cabbage, let's go ahead and get the other ingredients prepped so I can share with you something super exciting. First thing we gotta do is grate four carrots. I'm sure that most of you guys know, I recently partnered with Abundance Plus and thanks to you guys, it has been an incredible launch. I feel like this is one of those projects that calls for a food processor because there's a lot to great. I can't even begin to tell you how thankful I am for all of the memberships that you signed up for, for the comments and for all of the love, both here and over on Abundance Plus. And because of your support, I have two really awesome things I'm gonna share with you. The first one is that they've asked me to continue making videos and they want me to post one video every quarter. And that's in addition to the three videos that are currently posted and waiting for you. Which means that there are going to be even more videos over there completely obsessing about fermentation in a super unique and totally fun way. 
and for the next two weeks beginning right now if you sign up for either a yearly or a lifetime program using my coupon code fermented10 not only will you support the channel you get 10% off but you'll also be emailed with a welcome letter along with a phone number where you can text me for the next four weeks you can text me about any of your fermentation questions you can send me pictures and ask me how you think it's doing or any other topic I'm familiar with plus y'all can help me figure out what the next video is that you guys want to see over on Abundance Plus. If you head over to AbundancePlus.com, that is going to show you all of the different membership options that are available to you. But remember, the text option is only available with the yearly or the lifetime options. But there's also several tiers within each of those options. And be sure that you use the coupon code FERMENTED10, and that's going to tell them that I'm the one that sent you there, that you're going to get the text code, and that's one of the things that helps keep our channel going. And don't worry, I didn't forget about you guys that have already signed up. Make sure that you guys check your email. I made sure that you guys were also gonna get that text option if you want to. So check your email. And again, thank you so much for all of your support, all of your love, and all of your encouragement. It really means the absolute world to me. So now all we have to do is wait for the cabbage. And when it's all soaked for a few hours, we'll add that to it. It's been a few hours, night has come. So we got the lights out and I went ahead and strained Strained off our cabbage and you can see all of the liquid that came off of it. We put in a very small amount of liquid and all of this is just the liquid that came off of the cabbage. I want to make sure to set that aside to show you. Just so you know, it does say that rinsing for this recipe is not required. You're just going to put it in the colander and just let it sit there for a few minutes just to get any extra leftover moisture out. Then we'll add in all of these ingredients that we chopped up when we were chatting earlier. And it says to add in a quarter to a third of a cup of gochugong, but we're gonna add in a half cup because I really like heat. And about two tablespoons of soy sauce, tamari, fish sauce, whatever floats your boat. And then we're just gonna really mix it in there. Make sure every little bit is stirred up super well and every little bit is covered. Really squish it in there. And disposable gloves, Trust me, the heat will get on your fingers. You're gonna touch your eyeballs or you're gonna stain your hands red. I'm really mixing it in there really good. It's not very hot. I think I'm gonna add some more red pepper flakes. Quarter of a cup maybe. And these are red chili pepper flakes. This is technically gochugaru. And again, mix it in. That's starting to smell a lot better. Then we just load it into our crock. Try and avoid getting it around the edges if you're using water seal crock. And really squish it in there. Pack it in there super tight like sauerkraut. How beautiful does this look? And remember, you don't have to use a water seal crock. Like I said, I just got this this weekend and I'm really excited to try it out. You can use whatever fermenting vessel you are used to using. You can use a mason jar with something on top of it. You know, whatever it is, use that. And this little bit of extra, I'll probably just throw in a pint jar and ferment it on the side. As with most ferments, you really wanna make sure that you're leaving a few inches of, uh, a couple inches of headspace. And the reason for that is because kimchi and sauerkraut but kimchi especially it's gonna climb quicker than a toddler going after a cookie jar on the counter it's a super active and very quickly active so all the co2 bubbles are going to form on the inside and it's going to start to push the brine it's going to start to push the ferment out of the jar so this is definitely one that you want to come along and push down on the weight every day or two starting about the second day you're gonna come through and you're gonna push down on the weight. If you don't have a weight, just use gloves or clean hands and push it back into the jar to allow the CO2 to escape. Then we're just gonna wipe off the rim. I'm gonna try and not have any excess anything inside of our moat that can uh, bring on contamination. Fill our moat, I'd say leave probably a quarter of an inch. Top it with the lid. Mm -hmm. I love that, I should've left more. Oh well, it didn't account for the water displacement from the lid but it'll be fine, it's just water. The recipe says to leave this to ferment at room temperature for 48 hours. We all know that is not enough to reach maximum benefits, maximum gut health, maximum bacteria development, all of the things that we want from a ferment. So I'm gonna leave this for about two to 
four weeks, kind of just depending because I want a nice developed deep umami flavor. I'm gonna make sure that this sets at my room temperature, which is between 65 to 70 degrees. That's a little bit on the cooler side, but I like that because it develops a much more of a deep umami flavor. And you can go as high as 75, but I really would try and avoid going any higher than that. If this ferments at too high of a temperature, it's gonna break down the veggies much more quickly, so it's gonna be a bit of a mushier texture. It's not gonna develop the deep, rich umami flavor, and it's much more subject to any kind of uh, mold or just kind of going generally wonky. This particular vessel is really awesome for fermenting this sort of thing because it's much much less likely that anything will contaminate it. So I'm not super worried about checking on this other than making sure, you know, you wanna do a wellness check on it, but pushing down on that weight is gonna be super key to make sure that we're not getting the moat contaminated and to make sure that we're not gonna lose any of our delicious brine. If you're fermenting this in a mason jar, you're gonna wanna make sure to start burping it about the two day mark and you wanna try and do it at least every day. And that's just where you come along and you kind of burp it. If you need to squish down the vegetables to release any of the CO2, do that when you're checking on it. But you wanna come through, burp it, and then close it. And if you enjoyed this recipe, make sure you check out this video where I made some kimchi cucumbers in a vlog just a little bit ago. It's a huge customer favorite with of course my own twist thrown in. Can't be revealing any trade secrets now, can I? Peace out, sauerkraut.